What's up everyone, back for another beer review, but I guess today isn't just another beer review, no. It's a very, very special beer review, albeit an extremely delayed one, and that's because this beer review probably should have happened late last year in 2020, but it didn't. Uh, the channel went on hiatus the day before Thanksgiving of last year until just recently, about 10 months, and uh, yeah, brought back the channel and finally hit 1,000 beer reviews on the channel. So that is the special occasion, 1,000 beer reviews on the channel. And like I said, this should have happened last year. I was at 986 uh, beer reviews uh, when the channel went on a hiatus, only 14 away from 1,000, but we finally have reached this milestone. And I never thought I was gonna get to 1,000 reviews, honestly, uh, but turns out beer tubing is a lot of fun. I've met so many great individuals in the beer tubing community that I now call friends. And it's been a, blast honestly I, I like it's surpassed any expectations I had uh, going into this one when I started this channel back in April of uh, 2018 but anyway what am I reviewing for my 1000th beer review on the channel well we're gonna go with this super crazy whale from the Coors Brewing Company and they're out of Golden Colorado and this is their Coors Banquet. Uh, so this is an American adjunct lager that comes in at 5% alcohol by volume 15 IBUs at the time of review don't know exactly how old this fantastic stubby bottle is, but it does have a Best Buy date of December 6th of 2021 on it. And we're just a little bit over two months away from that date. So according to Coors, we're golden. See what I did there? Damn, I'm terrible. Anyway, so why am I reviewing this one for my 1000th beer review? Why did I decide to go with Coors Banquet? Well, um, that is the first beer that I ever had the pleasure of tasting in my life. The first ever beer that I had an entire bottle of was Rolling Rock, which reminds me, I need to review that at some point in the future. But this is the first beer I ever had a sip of. I was eight or nine years old. Quick story time. This will be a little bit longer review. Obviously, it's a thousandth review, so it's going to be longer. But if you want to just fast forward to the review, feel free. But story time. Uh, when I was a kid, I would go to uh, my grandma's uh, cabin in northeastern Pennsylvania, Smithport, uh, PA. Um, a couple weeks out of the year, in, in the summertime, tip, typically summer vacation, we'd go down there. And uh, sometimes my dad would come and we would all go to this local swimming hole. And it was like a, the swimming hole itself was like something you'd see in a movie. It had like a 10 to 12 foot cliff that at the top of it, there was a single tree. It had a rope you could swing on to jump into the water. It was fantastic. I used to love that. Well, on this day, and I don't remember if it was back in 88 or 89, I was born in 1980. So I was either eight or nine years old. I can't remember exactly, but it was definitely the late eighties. And all the adults had a case of beer they brought and they were drinking on them throughout the, throughout the day. And my dad's not a beer drinker at all like now he is even though he'll still he'll still he'll still stay to this day that like i don't like beer even though i i've gotten him into craft beer and he actually loves it um but he didn't drink lagers he didn't drink american adjunct lagers he didn't drink beer right but on this day he had a couple of them and i remember swimming up to him he was like you know in the shallow part and i sw swam up to him and he had a can now they they brought like they brought coors uh banquet for some reason they always would drink rolling rock that was like the jam in that area of PA. But for some reason, they brought Coors Banquet. And I remember the old yellow cans. That's what they had. And my dad was drinking one. I swam up to him and I said, Dad, can I have a drink? And like, you know, most fathers would say, oh, no, it's beer. You're too young. You wouldn't like it. And, you know, he finally relented after me bugging him for about five minutes. And I took a sip of it and I drank it. And he's like, oh, how is it? And I was like, oh, it's not bad. It was fucking horrendous. Of course, I lied to my dad in that situation because I'm a man, you know, even though I'm eight, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm one of the adults. But no, it was gross. I hated it. It was disgusting. And uh, yeah, it was something that was not good back then, but it was also the first beer I ever tried. And I always remember that uh, to this day. Now, I've had Coors Banquet numerous times since uh, I was of legal drinking age. And um, yeah, it's it's one of my, I want to say it's one of my favorites, because when it comes to American adjunct lagers, it's not my favorite style. It's it really not. Uh, but it's one of the better ones within the style. When you talk about the big three, Banquet, uh, Miller High Life, and Budweiser, Miller High Life's my favorite of those three. This is probably second, then Budweiser. Uh, the last time I had this one was in 2017. Um, some beer tubing friends, uh, my Canadian beer tubing friends, um, we would do Beer Analysis 101 that is now hosted by Nick, a.k.a. Uh, Maxwell Star over at Maxwell Star's Beer Review. Check them out. I believe it's every Wednesday around 8.30 now. It used to be 8. It usually gets pushed back, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but those guys are fantastic. And one of the early reviews that they did on Beer Analysis was Coors Banquet. I was on that panel. I don't remember what I said about it, but I don't think I hated it. I gave it a 3 out of a 5 on Untapped. Um, and I would say 
stylistically, this is like a 4.25, 4.5. Um, that's good. This is gonna be one of those reviews where I review both the style and my preference because again, not one of my favorite styles. But anyway, enough quacking. Let's get into this special review, Coors Banquet, giving it a crack, pouring it in the glass, and we're gonna go from there. And I love the fact, this is, what, was that a twist off? Yeah, but whatever. Uh, a hard day's work deserves a beer, says Banquet. Okay, here, well, here we go. Um, pouring in the other half uh, glass because that's what you do, right? That's where Ban Coors Banquet goes, but yeah. So yeah, it's pouring out like your typical uh, adjunct locker, right? There's, I don't think there's, this is gonna be like a no frills. I'll leave a little room to get my nose in there. Probably not necessary, but at the same time, why not? You know, whatever. So what does this look like? This looks like your typical American adjunct lager, golden straw color, all the clarity you ever wanted, good carbonation, about a half finger, it was about a finger of this bright white bubbly looking head. Uh, this has an etching at the bottom, so it's producing the carbonation. Yeah, that's a picture perfect adjunct lager in my book. Let's get a nose. So I believe for the ingredients, it's barley malt. Uh, did they say they use corn in this as well? I think it's, yeah, so it's Rocky Rocky Mountain water. We, gotta, we can't forget the Rocky Mountain water. Barley malt, corn, yeast, and I believe hop extract. That's that, Those are the ingredients. But yeah, it has this, <laughs> it has this corny scent to it. It really does. It's a little bit sweeter, a little bit of that sulfur thing that you get from lagers. But I'm getting a very slight touch of like a lemony kind of like citrus tone. It's not big, it's there. But yeah, sweeter corn, a little bit of that lemony citrus. Um, it smells like it's going to be super crisp, clean, and refreshing. It doesn't smell overly sweet. There's a little bit of like a slight floral thing going on. Yeah, uh, it smells like Coors Banquet. I mean, for those of you who have had this beer before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For you, those who haven't, picture an American adjunct lager, maybe not overly sweet, and smells like it's going to be super refreshing. Anyway, uh, appreciate everybody, you know, along for the ride. A thousand beer reviews on the channel. Frickin' insane. Uh, I just want to get into this one because, honestly, it seems like uh, I'm going to crush the shit out of this. Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> it's it's very inoffensive to me. And I've said that before in other adjunct lager reviews or like other lager reviews. But to me, when I'm drinking just a, like a 5% American adjunct lager, even like a craft lager, right? With no, no frills, like not hop forward, uh, no adjuncts, whatever. Um, you know, like, like, you know, any, any kind of added stuff outside of the corn. Um, this is kind of what I'm looking for. Body on this one's like lower side of medium, higher side of light. It's not watery. It's not like, you know, Miller, uh, light or Coors light or Bud light or something like that. It's, it's a little bit of have to let you know, Hey, it's 5%, not four. Um, the mouthfeel, super crisp, super clean. Uh, there's no like lingering flavors on the palate. Quite refreshing. Right at the front of the palate, sweeter like corn tinge to it. Sweeter uh, malt character, almost like a slight um, grainy kind of aspect. Mid palate, a touch of floral. Yeah, like a touch of floral hop component. A little bit of that like lemony citrus I was talking about, but very minute, but it's noticeable. And then it finishes semi-dry, not a huge residual sweetness or anything, a little bit of sweetness. And like I said, very inoffensive. Like it's super clean on the palate and it's it's a drinking beer. Listen, I'm reviewing Coors Banquet for my thousandth because, you know, it means something to me. Uh, you know, growing growing up and again, having that memory back then, spending time with my dad camping in Northeastern Pennsylvania with my family and stuff. I, I remember this, you know, and I, I, like, I mentioned Rolling Rock and that's another beer I'm gonna have to review at some point because that was the first beer uh, I ever had an entire bottle of and it was also when I was camping. But yeah, this is a beer that you don't really contemplate too much. You buy them in 12 packs. You buy them in, in cases. You This is a fridge beer. You have it in the fridge. Somebody comes over. You give them one. Your chat and your neighbor comes over. Whatever the case may be, right? You can drink a handful of them. You're not going to get hammered. and Or even if you want to, you're going to drink enough to you know for a good three or four hours and you'll feel good and you're not going to break the bank. So I can't say anything really negative about this beer. I will just say, as I've said before, the style just isn't for me, but that doesn't mean it's not for you. You know what I mean? If you're uh, an adjunct lager lover, if you love the Coors Banquets and the Miller High Lifes and the Budweiser's and the Bad Blues and all that stuff, then I would imagine you would probably enjoy this one to some degree. I would hope anyway. But yeah, so uh, rating on the Coors Banquet, 
Um, I'm gonna bump it up a little bit. Sentimental value probably, but I'm gonna give it a 3.25 out of five for me personally. Now that might sound low for a lot of you guys, but keep in mind, that really, when it comes to American adjunct loggers, I typically don't go above 3.5 out of 5 for personal enjoyment. It just doesn't happen because, again, not one of my favorite styles. But if we're going to talk about to uh, the style, what this rating would be, for me, I think I like Miller High Life a little bit better. But Coors Banquet's like a 4 to a 4.25 out of 5. Probably like a 4.25 out of 5 stylistically for this beer. It's one of the better ones I've had, um, especially of the big three in the States. And, uh, yeah. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Very inoffensive. Like, no off flavors. I Like, I'm sitting here talking to you, and I just don't have any flavor on my, It's not like there's a gross flavor. It's just none. It's clean. It's fine. Um, price and availability. Availability all over the fucking world. Like, you can find Coors Banquet all over the place, right? Now, these still be bottles, maybe not. Uh, also, shout out to a, another good friend of mine and fellow beer tuber, Dan, over at FLX Beer Reviews. I was just going to buy, like, a big can of it, but I ended up buying the 12-pack of the Stubby Bottles because they were $9.99 for a 12-pack. Like, that's that's a fine deal. Like, that's good. The 12-pack, under a buck uh, per Stubby Bottle, and I love the old-school uh, Stubby Bottles. Why? Why not? Right? I believe it said... Now, hang on. Let me read on the side here. It said... Uh, I saw it somewhere. It said something like, uh, oh yeah, 1936 Stubby Bottle. So this is like akin to the 1936 Stubby Bottle. Pretty fucking fantastic. So I uh, apologize for the longer review, but it is my thousandth review. And like I said, it's been an awesome ride and I'm hoping for at least another thousand more because I'm back and I'm hopefully going to be consistent with my content as much as I can be. Um, but yeah, this, this, this needed to happen. Or maybe it did, but it did. And uh, 3.25 out of 5 for me, personal rating. And then stylistically, we'll say 4.25 out of 5. Good beer. Now, if you had Coors Banquet before, I'm sure a lot of you have. How do you enjoy this one? Do you enjoy it more than a Miller High Life or a Budweiser? Do you prefer Miller Light? Do you like the lighter beers? Is there other adjunct loggers you like better than this? Throw it in the comments section. Let me know. Be curious to see what people think about this beer. Like I said, very inoffensive. Nothing um, It's going to blow you away, but like the price point, the availability and the taste. I love the cleanness of this one. So, you know, at the end of the day, it's a pretty damn solid American adjunct lager in my book. So appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review. But like I said, not just another beer review, that's a thousand beer review. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.